Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I have a really fun, quick and easy project. This is Bonnie's popcorn cowl and it only took one cake of the recommended yarn and I'm going to show that to you in just a second. But I also just wanted to make mention that even though this is an intermediate project, if you're a confident beginner, there's no reason why you cannot just jump in and give this a try. Mistakes are allowed. That's how we learn best. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. Creative Fluffily DK Weight Yarn. And this has 150 grams or 420 meters. This is made up of 40% cotton, 30% polyester, 20% acrylic, and 10% wool. For this project, we're going to be using two crochet hooks. We will be starting with the size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And then when we get to the popcorn, we're going to be using the larger, the USI or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I'm recommending that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. I'm also recommending that you have a tape measure available so that you can check your gauge to make sure that you are making the size that you desire. To begin, we will start with our slip knot and we are going to chain loosely a foundation chain of 124 chains. After completing that chain of 124 chains, we're going to be very careful to not twist the chain. And I'm just verifying that the chain is not twisted as we go to the first stitch. And we're going to join with a slip stitch by inserting the hook into that first chain and then slip stitch. We're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to work a double crochet in that same space as where we just joined. And we're going to work a double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and work those double crochets at the end of this round, you should have a total of 124 double crochets. And for the record, I am not including the chain two as a stitch. We are just gonna call that a chain in this uh, design. After crocheting all the way around, do make sure that this is not twisted in any way. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round. Now for round number two, we're going to chain two and we are going to begin the ribbing. We're going to work a front post double crochet. Let me back up in case you've never seen that. For a front post double crochet, we wrap the hook, insert the hook, and it goes around the body of the stitch, pull up a loop, and we complete the double crochet as we normally would. For a back post, we wrap the hook, we bring the hook in from the back door, it wraps around the front, just like so, and then ties in the back like a belt, just complete the double crochet as usual. So we're going to go back and forth, front post double crochet, followed by a back post double crochet, all the way around, and again, the stitch count is staying the same, 124 stitches, not including that turning chain. So go ahead and complete round number two. At the end of round two, we join with a slip stitch. Now for round three, it is going to be a repeat of round two with the chain two, but I think you'll be able to see more easily what is to be done. Every time you see a front post, you work a front post. And whenever you see the back post, we work a back post. So go ahead and do that again all the way around. And after you finish uh, round number three, 
you're going to see more of the ribbing effect. Let me go ahead and pause and let you take a look at that. So you're starting to see it does look like something. So go ahead and work this all the way around. At the end of round three, we join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And let's just take a look at our beautiful ribbing. As we begin round four, we're going to do something very important. We are going to change our hook from the H to the I or the nine or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. And we do this because the popcorns do tend to pull a little bit tighter if you keep to the same hook. So we just remedy that by upsizing it. Let's go ahead and chain one. And in the first stitch where we joined, we're going to go ahead and make our first popcorn. And we do this by working four single crochets in the same space. Pull up a loop. We insert our hook into the first of the four popcorn stitches. Then we grab the loop and pull it through and then we give it a chain. Make sure that you do not pull the chain too tightly because we will be working in that as we go around, but you also don't want it too loose. Okay, so now we're gonna skip the next stitch and then we're going to single crochet in that next space. Chain one, skip the next stitch and work a popcorn in the next stitch, which is four single crochets Again, pull up that loop, insert hook into that first of the four single crochets, pick up that loop again, and pull it on through. Give it a chain. Skip the next stitch, single crochet in that next space, chain one. Skip the next space and make another popcorn with those four single crochets. Pull up a loop, insert hook into that first stitch, and go ahead and pull that on through and give it a chain. And we're just going to continue this all the way around. Be sure that you are skipping stitches as you need, and occasionally take a look to make sure that the popcorn are evenly spaced as you go. After working this all the way around, um, I'm going to skip that last stitch, and I'm going to join with the slip stitch to the top of that popcorn, just like that. You should have a total of 31 popcorns. All right, so now we are going to turn, this is the first time that we turn in this entire project. We're going to chain one, and we are going to single crochet in that same place, which is still at the top of that popcorn, same place as joining. Now, if you think you're gonna have a hard time seeing this stitch, go ahead and put a stitch marker. Let me find one here. You can go ahead and put a stitch marker. I'll go ahead and do that. Although I don't really personally need this, but just, just to, to be clear, you can put a stitch marker in that first stitch of the round, just in case you think you may not see it again. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to chain one, and this is a chain one space from the last round. We're going to work a single crochet in that chain one space. Chain one. We're gonna skip the single crochet and we're going to work a single crochet in the top of that next popcorn. Chain one, single crochet in the chain one space that's in between the popcorns. Chain one, and again, single crochet in the top of that popcorn, chain one, and just work this all the way around. Now, if you find that your popcorns are either, you know, still too tight, you may need to bump up the hook size that you are using. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll just, um, there we go, complete this round. This is round number five with the backside facing. At the end of round five, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round that we have marked with our stitch marker, just like that. You should have 
a total of, let's see, 62 single crochets and 62 chain one spaces, I believe. Let's go ahead and turn. And we are going to chain one again. And instead of working um, in the top of the stitch, we're going to work only in the chain one spaces at this point. So in the first chain one space, we are going to work a popcorn. Just like we did two rounds ago chain one but notice that at this in this row when we started on round I'm sorry round four we started in the same stitches joining that this is one stitch over from that we did not work in the same place that we joined but in the chain one space to the left of that okay and after we chain one at the top of this popcorn we're going to single crochet in the next chain one space chain one and then popcorn in the next chain one space so this round is different from the foundational round because we're not working in the tops of stitches we're working or, or in single crochets or double crochets we're working in chain one spaces okay and then again single crochet in that next chain one space chain one and then we work another popcorn in the next chain one space So the thing that's really important to be sure of in this particular project is that as you work each additional popcorn round, which is every other round, they should be alternating. They should be in between the popcorns of uh, two rounds below. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this round and I will show you the join. So after working this all the way around, I'm going to work that last single crochet in that last chain one space, make a chain one, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet or, or the top of that first popcorn and chain one and we turn and we do the same thing again. We work a single crochet in that chain one space, chain one, single crochet in the top of that next popcorn, chain one, single crochet in that next chain one space. This is pretty much the same as what we did two rounds previously. So make sure you work in those chain one spaces and in the tops of the popcorn stitch all the way around. And again, the stitch count does remain constant as it has it's going you should have approximately um, 62 single crochets and 62 chain one spaces once again we join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round okay let's turn all right, now we're ready to begin the next round. We're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet into that first chain one space, chain one. And then now we work a popcorn stitch in the next stitch. And you can see that the all the uh, popcorns are continuing to alternate and that's what you want to do. The popcorn should go in between the two popcorns, two rows previously. So if you're ever confused as to where to work the popcorns, they go in between the popcorns down below. Go ahead and complete this stitch and single crochet in the next. Now this is what we're going to do until the cowl reaches the length that you desire. So, and actually let me go ahead and put my stitch marker in at the beginning of this round because as you can see it's very, it'd be very confusing otherwise. Let me go ahead and give you some directions going forward. 
the row that began the popcorn stitches was round number four. But what we're going to do once we complete this round that we're working on now, we're going to go back and repeat rounds five, six, seven, and eight. So repeating rounds five, six, seven, and eight over and over again will yield this beautiful popcorn fabric. If you need stitch guiding, look at the bottom of the screen and I will put the time mark if you want to review those rounds again. Just keep in mind that each round you should have a total of, or each round that works the popcorn, that's with the front side facing, you will have 31 popcorns in the round and the rounds where you have the back side facing, when we're working the single crochets and chain ones only, you will have 62 single crochets and 62 chain one spaces in those rounds. So go ahead and complete that. And then I will show you how to return to the ribbing. Okay, my cowl now measures from the beginning of the ribbing until the last round that I just worked, it measures approximately seven inches. Now, if you want your cowl to be thicker, longer, just continue in the popcorn stitch, repeating those two rounds until you get to one inch from the desired um, depth or length of the cowl. Okay, so I have seven inches, like I said, from the ribbing row rounds to the last round worked. And I have just joined, after completing this popcorn round, I have joined with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to do something very important to discontinue this round. I'm going to change back to my original hook size of the H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. Remember, we had to bump up to the larger size for the popcorn. We're now we're returning to the original smaller sized hook. We are going to turn to have the back side facing, we're going to chain two. Now normally I work single crochets in these stitches as I'm going to show you, but since we're returning to ribbing, I'm going to work double crochets. And what we do to return to the original ribbing is we're going to work two double crochets in each chain one space all the way around. So two in the tops of the popcorns, and then we're going to work two in between those popcorn stitches. So go ahead and work this all the way around. Again, two double crochets in the top of the popcorns, and two in that chain one space in between. After crocheting those double crochets all the way around, we join with a slip stitch to that first double crochet of the round. And let's go ahead and turn. This will be the last time that we really need to turn. The next two rounds will be worked the same. We're going to chain two and we're going to work a front post double crochet over that first stitch and then a back post front post, just like we did at the very beginning of this project, and then a back post. So go ahead and work two rounds, working front and back post double crochet, and again joining them at the top of the very first stitch of the round, not the chain, but the stitch, the uh, double crochet or front post double crochet. After you complete those two rounds we will fasten off and be done with our project. After working those last two rows of ribbing, join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. Go ahead and give it a chain and a tug and find your very sharp scissors. There they are. And go ahead and clip a generous strand at least uh, five to six inches minimally um, that way it will make it much easier to hide go ahead and get your your tapestry or your yarn needle and we're going to do this on the back side so you can go ahead and run this down into the stitching and we're going to just run this into the stitches. This should be very easy and this should hide 
very well because of the fuzzy nature of this yarn. This yarn does tend to grab onto itself and hold tight, as you probably noticed if you had to do any ripping out. And that's actually a good thing as far as these strands go because that will minimize their coming back out again. So let's go ahead and just wove it under those stitches and I'm pulling back on it so that in case or when it does pull back it doesn't pull out. Okay so let's go ahead and trim close to the stitches but be careful not to cut your stitches and that is hidden securely within the work and let's go ahead and take a look at our popcorn cowl. I hope you enjoyed making my popcorn cow today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.